We're going to pray and we're going to study the Bible. It is critical that you have a Bible this morning. We're going to go to a number of texts. And you must have a Bible. We will be teaching this morning. You must have a Bible. Okay. As our custom is, we're going to pray. We're going to pray before we study the Word of God. You're going to pray silently. And then... I will pray. Now let's pray. Father in heaven, I pray that you'll speak through the word by the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 5. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 5 as we begin our Bible study. Hebrews chapter 5, and you have to follow me closely. If you do not follow, you will leave this place not understanding what I'm saying. So please follow the Bible very closely this morning. Hebrews chapter 5. Are you there? Now let's go to verse 11 and listen to what Paul says here. In verse 11 of Hebrews 5, he says, Of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered, saying, Ye are dull of hearing, for when for the time ye ought to be, what's that T word? Teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, the, which be the first principles of the oracles of God and are become such as have need of milk and not of strong what? Meat. You know what Paul is saying here? Paul is writing to these Hebrews and he's, he's saying to them, you should be teaching the word of God, the very first principles, but you have not grown and matured, so you are still stuck on milk and not the meat of the word. When he's talking about meat, he's not talking about steak. <laughs> or lamb chops. No, he's talking about getting the deeper into the word and teaching. Then he says in verse 13, listen to what Paul says, For everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a, what's that? Babe, he says, if you're still on the Similac, you are a babe. Paul says, but strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. So he says here in chapter 5, we need to be moving from milk to the what? Meat. He continues with this idea because, you know, in the Bible, there were no chapter breaks or verses. Man did that. So the Greek continues in chapter 6. So he's still talking about milk and meat in chapter 6, verse 1. The Bible says, Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection. The word perfection there, there means maturity. Not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God, of the doctrine of baptisms and of laying on of hands and of resurrection of the dead and of eternal judgment. Pause. This is interesting. Paul, do you see these six points on the screen? Repentance, faith, baptism, laying on of hands, etc., etc., Paul says when it comes to these principles, we need to do what with them? What's that L word that he uses? We've got to go back to the Bible. <laughs> Let's go back. Let's go back to verse 1. Uh, You've got to stick with me. Let's go back to verse 1 in Hebrews 6. He says, Hebrews 6 verse 1, Therefore, what's the L word there, the next word? Leaving. Paul says you need to leave, and then he mentions these six principles. Now, is Paul saying that we no longer need to teach these things, these um, principles that are on the screen? Is Paul saying that, yes or no? No. Paul says we need to leave these things, and there's a reason why. 
Because when you look, what is this a, a diagram or a picture of? The Hebrew sanctuary, right? Or that mosaic sanctuary that God told him to build. And here, these six principles, they can all be taught in type in the outer court. Are you following that? They can be taught in type in the outer court. Paul is saying, we, you Hebrews, you should be, on, be beyond that. Because Christ is no longer functioning in the outer court. When Paul wrote this in, to the Hebrews, was Jesus in the outer court, yes or no? No. The outer court represents earth. When Paul wrote this, Christ was in heaven. Paul says you need to leave these things because these can be taught here, and they're very basic. You should be more mature by now, but you still need milk instead of meat. So the question begs to be asked then this morning, what was the meat of the word for Paul? That's what we need to study. What was the meat of the word for Paul? Because brothers and sisters, if we are still stuck in the outer court, we're not growing as we should. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 8. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 8 and see what this, the meat of the word for Paul is. The Bible says, I'm laying the foundation for our study this morning. Still talking about bells. I'm laying this foundation in Hebrews chapter 8. The Bible says, now of the things which, ye, which we have spoken, what things? Chapters 1 through 7. This is the, what's that S word? Sum, or the main point, or the meat of the word. We have such an high priest which is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens, a minister of the, what? Sanctuary and of the true tabernacle which God pitched and not man. According to the Apostle Paul, I love it. Paul says the sum or the main point of what I am writing to you Hebrews is that we have a high priest in the heavenly, what everybody, sanctuary. Now when we talk about the sanctuary or you go to a sanctuary seminar, many times you'll hear things like the lamb points to whom? This is not a trick question. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's so easy, it's simple. <laughs> yeah, the lamb points to Jesus, and um, the priest takes the blood, and he goes into the sanctuary, and the table of showbread represents the what? What is the table of showbread symbolic of? This is not a trick question. The word of God, of course, and it's also symbolic of whom? Jesus says, I am the bread of life. That bread represents Jesus and the word of God. So, so no, no, normally we hear these sanctuary messages and we hear these things. <clears throat> but if the high priest functioning in the heavenly sanctuary was present truth for Paul in his day, that means Christ functioning as high priest must be present truth in our day. Does that make sense? It must be. And that's what we study in the Sabbath school lesson, right, Dave? Christ in the sanctuary, the investigative judgment, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. That is our present truth in 2018. Many times we look at the sanctuary, but we fail to talk about the high priest's garment. Because if the high priest, if that was the sum or the main point of what Paul was discussing. That means even the garment of the high priest must be very, very significant. Must be. Has to be. It's part of the sanctuary. All right? We read earlier, on the border of his garment, you have a bell and a pomegranate. A bell and a pomegranate. A bell and a pomegranate all around the border of that garment. I'm wondering this morning, is that important in any way? Yes! 
Of course it is. Because Paul says the high priest is the main point. You ready to study? That's the foundation. We got to go from the milk to the meat. Let's see what uh, this, this meat message is all about. Let's go to Exodus chapter 28. Let's go back to Exodus chapter 28, okay? Exodus chapter 28. Exodus chapter 28. Exodus 28. Let's go to verse 33. Exodus 28, verse 33. Are you there? Only two people? <laughs> there you go, Karen. <laughs> Exodus 28. Are you there, brothers and sisters? Now listen to the word of God. The Bible says in verse 33, so beautiful. And beneath upon the hem of it, thou shalt make pomegranates of blue and of purple and of scarlet. All of these colors have symbolic meaning. Round about the hem thereof, and bells of gold between them round about. And a golden bell and a pomegranate. A golden bell and a pomegranate upon the hem of the robe round about. Now, which fruit, this is not a trick question, which fruit was between the bells? Was it a strawberry, a watermelon? Which fruit? Pomegranate. Pomegranate. Do you think that's significant? What color is the, the what color um, are the seeds? Red. Of course, we know that points to the blood, et cetera, et cetera. And the Bible says here about pomegranates. Anybody here have ever eaten a pomegranate? Uh, very nice, huh? And this is just what it looks like. Now listen to what the Bible says about pomegranates because they are very um, significant fruit, okay? The Bible says in Deuteronomy, a land of wheat and barley and vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of oil, um, oil, olive, and honey. So uh, this was the promised land. So the Bible says that pomegranates were in the promised land. You remember when um, those two spies went out to spy the land? What were their names? Yeah, Caleb and Joshua. And you remember um, the fruit that they brought back? What was the fruit they brought back? Anybody remember? Grapes. Everybody remember those grapes. <laughs> Everybody remember grapes. But they brought back more than just grapes. Listen to what the Bible says. In Numbers 13. And they came unto the brook of Eshcol and cut down from thence a branch with one cluster of grapes. There are the grapes. And they bear it between two upon a staff. And they brought of the, what everybody? The pomegranates. We don't remember the pomegranates. The promised land was a blessed land by God. These pomegranates are showing us that God would rather bless you than to curse you. No one's saying amen to that? You want to be cursed or something? Amen. The way God functions, he would rather bless than to curse. Amen. And the pomegranate, the fruit, was a blessed fruit because it was in the promised land. Now, we're going to keep that pomegranate in mind, but my main focus for our discussion, we want to focus on the bells. Let's go to verse 35. Verse 35, what's the purpose of these golden bells? Verse 35, are you there? All right, let's read verse 35. And it shall be upon Aaron to minister and his, what's that S word? Sound shall be heard when he goeth in unto the holy place before the Lord and when he cometh out. That he die not. You know how powerful that is? Now I bought a bell here. You ever heard of Michael's, that clothing store? <laughs> I brought this just, what, I think Thursday or something? <laughs> that golden bell. And you know, a bell, it makes sound. Well, you have the little clapper here, and when it drops, you hear that. You know why you hear this? Can you hear this all the way in the back? You hear that because the bell is literally vibrating and the sound waves are traveling through the air, therefore you hear. But if I hold the bell, you can't really hear it. You don't hear anything. You just hear it hitting, but it's not the same. Because I'm, I'm preventing the bell 
from vibrating, thus the molecules cannot go through the air, you cannot hear. The Bible says that the priest on his garments, on that robe, the hem, uh, history tells us that there were 72 in total of the bells and the pomegranates. What's 72 divided into two? 36. Isn't that right? 36. So if you have 36 bells on the garment, I guarantee you that you can hear that high priest functioning and ministering in the holy place and the most holy place. The Bible says the bells were there so the priest could be heard that he died not. In other words, when that priest was moving in that sanctuary, that thing was on his garment, every, when, when the children of Israel heard that bell, they were supposed to enter the holy place and the most holy place with that high priest by faith. You're not hearing what I'm saying. You're not hearing what, you know, you know what I just said. That bell ringing showed them that the priest was moving. What word did I just say? Moving. Moving and ministering on their behalf. That priest was not dead. Moving. But we got those bells, and it's for a reason. And believe me, if there were 36, they heard those bells. They heard it. They heard it. Because the children of Israel, while those bells were ringing, they were on, on the outside, very, very quiet during the Day of Atonement. Very solemn. These bells. I'm going to use this for my little illustration friend today. I paid $6 for it. I'm going to use it. <laughs> 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 mm. All right. Now, in 2018, we should be following the high priest who is Jesus Christ. Are we living in the anti typical day of atonement? Yes or no? Yes. During the time of Moses and Aaron, that was the type. We are living in the real deal. The bells, listen to me very carefully. The bells, put it on the screen, represents prophecy coming to fulfillment. You with me now? <laughs> oh, yeah, we're going to go a little deeper this morning. Okay, we're teaching. The bells ringing represents. Bible prophecy coming to fulfillment. Well, let's look at this. Put it on the screen so it's very clear. We know this 2,300-day prophecy from Daniel 8, verse 14, onto 2,300 days, and then shall the sanctuary be, what, everyone? Cleansed, right? And a part of that prophecy, you have the 70-week prophecy, those 70 weeks, okay? The 70 weeks included the baptism of Jesus and also his crucifixion. Jesus was crucified in the year A.D., what everyone, A.D. 31, okay? When Jesus was crucified in A.D. 31, after he was resurrected Sunday morning, where did Jesus go? Heaven. He went to heaven, you know, to see the sacrifice was accepted by his father, and then he came back down to earth for 40 more days. But then according to Acts chapter 1, verse 11 or so, he went back to heaven. When Jesus went back to heaven in A.D. 31, was he functioning as the common priest or the high priest? High priest. Therefore, if he is functioning as high priest, he must be wearing the garments of the high priest. That means when Jesus went to heaven in A.D. 31, functioning as high priest in the holy place, he was functioning as high priest, and he was moving. Therefore, in A.D. 31, when Jesus was cut off in the middle of the week, bells were ringing. When Jesus was moving in heaven in A.D. 31, functioning as high priest, the bells on his garment were ringing. Why? Prophecy came to fulfillment. Are you following what I'm saying? The bells are ringing. Prophecy is coming to fulfillment. Question. What happened, I just love it, talking about prophecy here. What happened at the end of the, the 70 weeks began in 457, and they concluded in A.D. 34. In A.D. 34, because remember, 
Jesus moves based on prophecy. In AD 34, did Jesus make a move based on prophecy? What do you think? I would say yes, since the date is up there. <laughs> That's what I would say. Question. What happened in A.D. 34 prophetically? Anybody remember that? I'll give you a hint. There it is. Stephen was stoned. When Stephen was stoned, was that a fulfillment of Bible prophecy? That means Jesus moved. When Stephen was stoned, did Jesus move? What do you think? So if he moved, that meant what was ringing. There you go. Let's see if Jesus moves. Let's go to Acts 7. Let's go to Acts chapter 7. Let's go to Acts chapter 7 here. Let's see if Jesus made a movement. Acts chapter 7, the stoning of Stephen. Oh, yes. Acts chapter 7. We know this very well. Acts chapter 7. The Bible says here, let's go to verse, for time's sake, let's go to verse 55, 5, 5, Acts 7, verse 55. The Bible says in Acts 7, verse 55, are you there, family? Good, good, good. Very nice text. I love it. But he, that's Stephen, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus, what's the next word? Standing on the right hand of God. <laughs> Question, is this the stoning of Stephen, yes or no? When Stephen was about to be stoned, did Jesus make a move? He stood up. The Bible says, He's sitting, when he went to heaven, according to Colossians and Hebrews, he sat down at the right hand of the Father. At the right hand, he sat down. But when this prophecy, the 70 weeks, came to fulfillment, Jesus moved. He stood up. Now, when you are sitting down as a high priest and you stand up, those bells are going to be ringing. When Stephen was stoned, based on prophecy, the bells on Jesus' garments started ringing. Why? Because prophecy is coming to fulfillment. Let's go a little deeper. <clears throat> Daniel 8, 14, unto 2,300 days or years shall the sanctuary be cleansed. What date, if, if it was not for Daniel 8, 14, there would be no such thing as a Seventh-day Adventist church. You know that? No such thing. That is a pillar, that, that, that verse is a pillar for our church. What year? Anybody remember that day, the month, the year? Anybody remember that? October what? October 22, 1844, right? October 22, 1844, that's when we be, um, believe the Seventh-day Adventists, we believe that's when the investigative judgment began from Adam all the way down, okay? So uh, October 20, 1844. In 1844, October 22, did Jesus Christ make a move? Was that move based on Bible prophecy, yes or no? Yes. So if it was based on prophecy, Jesus made a move, and he's garbed as the high priest, that means what was ringing When Jesus moved from the holy place to the most holy place, according to Daniel 7, started ringing. Why? Prophecy is being fulfilled. Wow. This is serious business. Let's just make sure we're all together here. I just love it. So we're here, we started here in the outer court. That represents the earth. Jesus moved after his resurrection from the earth to the holy place in the heavenly sanctuary. He moved there in what year, everyone? So to, after the resurrection, what, what year was he resurrected? 8031. 8031 
And uh, well, who was stoned in what year? AD 34. So we have AD 31, AD 34, those bells were ringing. And then Jesus made another move from the holy place to the most holy place in what year? 1844, the bells were ringing. Here we see on the screen, to make it very simple so we're all together, the bells were ringing, and the ringing always connected. Always connected to Bible prophecy. Man, that's some good stuff. <laughs> right there, that's some good stuff. I love it. Now, what does this have to do with me in 2018? Do you think that the, the bells are ringing now? You better believe it. Those bells are ringing. Why? Because prophecy is being fulfilled. We see what happened. I showed you already the, the LGBT, that agenda, and how the Sunday law is coming next. You better believe that's going to happen one day. The only reason the Sunday law is not passed yet is because God is giving us more time. You didn't hear what I just said. God is so merciful that God says, these folks, they're not ready yet, so I'm going to hold back the winds of strife a little longer. I'm going to give them more time. That's why it's not here yet. But we know prophecy is being fulfilled I, look at this. You know, we, we forget very easily. You know how it is? We just forget so easily. So I just want to remind us how bad just last year was. You know, last year, we made history. Extreme hurricanes and wildfires made 2017 the most costly U.S. disaster year on record. Look at this. The disastrous cost $306 billion with a B in total damage just last year. I want to remind us what happened last year. Because, you know, I tend to forget very easily. Just last year. What happened? September 4, more than 1,000 firefighters battling largest fire in Los Angeles history. You remember that? Just last year, a few months ago. And then you have September 7, you have three hurricanes. There in the Atlantic. And then you have September 10, Hurricane Irma slams Florida. And then you have September 18, Hurricane Maria, extremely dangerous storm, pounds Dominica. And then you have September 19, Mexicans dig through collapsed building as quake kills. It killed over 225 people in one day. And then you have September 20, Hurricane Maria battles into Puerto Rico. They're still recovering. In Puerto Rico, monster storm. And then you have Hurricane Nate, due to be a Category 2, October 7, 2017. And then you have at least 17 dead as firefighters struggle to weaken California fires, October 9, 2017. You, do you know one of our academies got burned down? A seven-day Adventist Academy got burnt October 12th. A California wildfires now deadliest in state's history as fatalities increase to 31. We're making history just last year. Just, I can see this was like 10 years, just last year. That's why the Washington Post said in January this year, extreme hurricanes and wildfires fires May 2017, the most costly U.S. disaster year on record. Come on, brothers and sisters. Do you know how significant this is? History is being made, and we are watching it. Let me, let me help you. You know, you know how it is? You know, when I'm, when I'm getting ready to preach, sometimes I'm sitting down, and I'm so excited. Like, you know, I'm like shaking my leg. I'm so excited. I can't wait. To run with Jesus. I can picture Jesus with all these prophecies coming to fulfillment. That Jesus is in the most holy place is shaking his leg. I can't wait to come back. And as he's shaking his leg, those bells are what? Prophecy is being fulfilled. Prophecy is coming to fulfillment. And the thing about it is, we know as Seventh-day Adventists how it's going to end. 
We know exactly how it's going to go down. Come on, brothers and sisters. That was just a few months ago. Did you see all those? I put them in chronological order by date. Just a few months ago. We made history. Every single person in this church should be wide awake to spiritual things. Why? The bells are ringing. Prophecy is being fulfilled. I want to read something to you. This is just, this is just, this is just blows the mind. Listen to what she says. The perils of the last days are upon us, and in our work we are to warn the people of the danger they are in. Let not the solemn scenes which prophecy, just last year, has revealed be left untouched. Listen to what she says. If our people at Fresno Asian including the pastor, were half awake. She does not, she does not say three-fourths. She does not say uh, uh, seven out of ten, 70 percent. She says, just give me half. She says, if they were half awake, if they realized the nearness of the events portrayed in the Revelation, a reformation would be wrought in our churches, and many more would believe the message. We have no time to lose. What? Can you imagine if the Apostle Paul and John the Baptist and all those folk were alive today? The folk come to church and they sleep. Are you kidding me? We have no time to sleep. Are you kidding? Some people can't get through a 40-minute sermon. Some people just can't do that. And you're ready for the time of trouble? Oh, no. Oh, no. Let, let, let's, just be, let's be real, brothers and sisters. Let's just be honest. Some of us having a hard time right now to stay awake. Right now. What's going to happen when God releases the four winds of strife? Come on, brothers. Come on. Let's think about what's going on here. The bells are ringing, folks. If we can't take a one-hour sermon, we're in trouble. We are in trouble. You know why I say that? Because truth be told, we can watch we can watch basketball for three hours and we don't we don't we don't not not even one time, and it can be a late game too. <laughs> it could be a doubleheader in be baseball, what have you? We don't not off nothing. The sermon goes a little lengthy. <laughs> you know how sad that is. That's really sad. You know why? He just told us, we are not even half awake. We, include me, we're not even half awake. That's why God has to be so merciful to every single one of us here. Because if God, if Jesus were to come right now, and the wife says Jesus delays in mercy because many of us aren't ready. Because if Jesus were to come right now, this very second, many Adventists will be completely lost. That's why he delays. She says, if I can just get some folk who are just half. Not even 100%, not even 100%. It's just half. A reformation will take place. Wow. Wow. What words? <laughs> so the question begs to be asked. Because last year, bell ringing, 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 made history just last year, just a few months ago. The question must be asked, when will the bells ring for the very last time? That's a good question. When will they ring and that's it? Oh, the Bible, let's go to Daniel 12. Let's go to Daniel chapter 12. Let's go to Daniel chapter 12. 
When will it ring for the last time? Because God is so merciful, he's given us time after time after time. Daniel 12, so merciful. Daniel 12, are you there, family? The Bible says, Daniel 12, verse 1. And at that, what's that next word? Oh, it's a prophecy there. Time is involved. At that time shall Michael do what, everyone? When Jesus stands, do the bell sound yes or no? Yes. Michael is going to stand up the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people, and there shall be a time of trouble, trouble such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time. And at that time, thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. I pray to God that's everyone in this building. Brothers and sisters, if our names are written in that book, if you're alive during the time of trouble, you are safe. You're safe. We know that's the 144,000 that make it during a time of trouble. If you're alive during that time, you will be part of the 144,000 who do not die. These people are safe. Their names are in that book. But the Bible says a time is going to come when Michael, when Jesus stands up and the time of trouble commences. That's the last time, the, the last time, the bell, is right here, when he stands up, boom, last time, it's going to ring. You know why? Because when Jesus stands up, in Daniel 12, verse 1, he ceases to function as the high priest. He is no longer functioning as high priest once he stands up, because once he stands up, up, he is changing his clothes from priest robes to king robes, and kings do not wear bells. He's changing clothes. You think I'm making this stuff up? <laughs> I'm not making this up. Listen to what she says. Uh -uh. She says, well, well, before we get there, this is just a diagram to show us how we can be ready for the second coming of Jesus. This is what we do. What is found in the holy place, this, do you know this is the sanctified life? This is what we do in order to be sanctified. Bible study, prayer, and we share, okay? So that's just practical there. But listen to what she says here, okay? Phenomenal. And I saw Jesus rise up in the holiest. And as he came out, we heard the tinkling of the, what? I'm not making this stuff up. And knew that our high priest was coming out. Just like Aaron, they knew when they heard those bells tinkling, they knew that Aaron was about to come out. She says, man, I heard, we heard those bells tinkling. Now listen to what she says. She says, then Jesus laid off his priestly garment, and put on his, what everybody? So you can't make this stuff up. His kingly robe and took his place on the cloud which carried him to the east. Wow. Wow. Powerful that is. Those bells are no longer ringing when he stands up. When Jesus stands up the next time, that's it. When he stood up, when Stephen was stoned, he sat back down afterwards. But when he stands up in Daniel 12, verse 1, no more sitting down. He's changing clothes. He's coming out the most holy place. Intercession is done. Uh, the investigative judgment is done. He's leaving the most holy place. He's going through the holy place, and he's going to change. Because in heaven, there is no outer court. Outer court represents the earth. So he's going to change, and he's going to come back as a king to take us all home. 
powerful this is? We're going to go back to the pomegranate to show you how powerful this stuff is. You can't make this up. How do I know? Remember that fruit in the beginning? I told you we're going to come back. Do you know the fruit, the pomegranate, shows that Jesus is a king? How? Come on, brothers. <laughs> Come on, you can't make The top of every single pomegranate is in the shape of a king's crown. I'm not making this stuff up. That's why the, the, the pomegranate, the, it could not be a strawberry, it would not fit. It could not be a grape, it would not fit. It could not be a watermelon, a pear. Uh, it could not fit. Only the pomegranate. Oh, the bottom, whatever. The bottom of the pomegranate. The bottom of that pomegranate, thank you, is in the shape of a king's crown. You can't make that up. You know why? Every time the children of Israel, on the Day of Atonement once a year, they saw that high priest, they were reminded, one day, a king is coming. A king is coming one day. A king is going to come. Brothers and sisters, one day, this, this is the depiction right here, that's going to happen one day. He is going to come with a scepter in his hand with no bells, because he's a king now. Have a crown on his head. It's going to happen one day. Brothers and sisters, 2018, the bells are ringing, but we're not even halfway. Are you kidding? <laughs> you know what puts people to sleep? One word, three letters, sin. That's it. Sin is what puts us to sleep. Brothers and sisters, we should be so wide awake to the times. This church should be so packed. This church, we should have like three services. This is how packed this church should be. Every church. Every church in the de denomination should be so packed you have multiple services every Saturday. But because of sin. People oh, just sleep away. Sleep away. But I guarantee you when that sun sets tonight, most Adventists, they'll be awake for hours watching the television. You know why? No, 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 we don't take sin. We don't take sin seriously. That's why. We are so worldly focused. We believe that our holiness sets when the sun goes down. No, no, no. We're supposed to function holy when the sun sets. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or every single day of the week, we're supposed to live for Jesus. Every day. Not just on Saturday. That doesn't even make sense. There's 168 hours in a week or something like that. We only come to church for like two hours. And we struggle for two hours sometimes. <laughs> struggle for two hours. Come on, folks. We need to wake up. Alvin Mirage needs to wake up. <laughs> he need to wake up, man. Because that thing is going to happen one day. But the problem is sin. Only problem on us is sin. That's it. That's the only problem on this planet is sin. And God, desperately, because of the love of Jesus, he wants to take sin out of our lives. Why would he want you to stay in sin? That doesn't even make sense. He wants us, through his power, to gain victory over that thing or things. Victory. That's what he wants. He desires it because he loves us so much. It's all about Jesus, brothers and sisters. It's all about Jesus and that love he has for humanity. Just like the children's story. Remember? The Bible says, come on to me, all you that labor. Jesus says, I'm preparing a mansion, preparing homes. Come on, folks. He's doing all that because of love. That's it. He loves you, and he wants you safe. Somebody might say, oh, well, you don't know what I've done, Pastor Alvin. I'm a mess. I'm so bad I can't be saved. Keep quiet, man. Come on. <laughs> That's the problem with human beings. 
We focus so much on our sins instead of focusing on the cross. Exactly. We're so negative. I'm so bad. I'm so bad. I can't go. <laughs> what about Jesus? You're so powerful. Jesus, you're so amazing. Jesus, you can give me victory through the power of the Holy Spirit. What about that? We just stay negative all the time. Nah. You got to cancel that thinking out. That's called stinking thinking. You got to be positive, brothers and sisters. We serve a God who is on our side, who is alive. All heads bowed and eyes closed. Make a very simple appeal. Very specific. Hmm. Because we, we need help. We're not ready. We're not even half awake. We need help. If you are here and you know that you are not even half awake, not even half, and you're saying, Lord God, I need help help in my Christian experience. I'm not ready. I'm not even half awake. Can't even take an hour sermon. Can't even take it. I need help, Lord, to wake up. If that is you, raise your hand. I need help. I just need help. Keep them up. I need help. Not even half awake. Hands down. Next appeal. Jesus, those bells are ringing. But I have strayed from the Lord. I have backslidden. I need to come back to Jesus right now. I need to come back to Jesus before the closing prayer. And I can come to Jesus sitting in my pew, and he will not reject me. But I have backslidden. If that is you, raise your hand. I'm going to pray for you. Keep your hands up. I backslidden. I strayed from the Lord. Keep them up. Hands down. We're going to pray. I'm going to kneel. You can remain seated if you so choose. And you pray within your heart. Be honest with God and tell him exactly what is on your heart. And he will hear and he will not reject. Let's pray. Father in heaven. I pray for those who responded to the first appeal, just being honest, saying, Lord God, I am not even half awake. I am dead sleeping when it comes to spiritual things. But the good news is, God, you can work with honest people. And so for those who raise their hands, I pray that you will bless them in a very special way. And Lord, prick the heart that they'll wake, be awakened to righteous things. To see that the bells are ringing in, in 2018, and may they uh, wake out of their sleep and slumber. Lord, we all need help. I pray for those who raise their hands at the second appeal saying, Lord, I have strayed from you. I have backslidden. Some way, somewhere in my life, I have strayed. And Lord, I need to come back to you right now. Tomorrow is not good enough. I need to come to Jesus now. And the good news is, Jesus does not reject anyone who comes to him. He does not cast that person away. He embraces that individual. Why? Because of love. And because of love, he is preparing a place for every single person here. Why? He wants us in heaven with him. But Lord God, we focus so much on ourselves and so much on our sins and so much on how bad we are. No, no, we need to focus on Jesus. Because one day that king is going to come. He's coming. And that pomegranate is a clear indication that Jesus will come as king of kings and lord of lords. It's going to happen. And so, Lord, right now in 2018, as those bells are ringing, I pray that we will be preparing ourselves, uh, having a deeper relationship with Jesus by doing what is found in the holy place of the sanctuary. Bible study, prayer life, and witnessing. That's it. So, Lord, we need help. Every single person in here needs help. Lord, let us fall. I pray that we'll fall deeper in love with you in these last days. 
Because with Jesus, it's all about love. Love prompts action. So, Lord, may we share what we learn. God, please, if we are sleeping, may we all awake to righteousness. Continue to bless us throughout this Sabbath day, and may we keep this day holy and be reminded that when the sun goes down, our righteousness does not go with it. And we're only righteous through Christ living inside of us. Lord, we love you. In Jesus' name I pray. Let every child of the king say, Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Hold on. Don't give up.